Okay, today we're going to make a cabinet, and I'm going to use all this steel you see here, primarily the one and a half by three eighths cold rolled rods. I'm going to be using these two units, the MP210 MIG and the 200 TIG, square wave TIG 200. I'm cutting all my steel today with an old Craftsman bandsaw that I like. People often say, why do I use the bandsaw over any of the new technology? It's quiet and it's relatively clean because those filings just fall into the pan. They don't go flying through the air. And I guess, above all, it's, it's not deafeningly loud. And slow and steady wins the race. I like making slow, even cuts. And there you go, I'm making the door frame first. And these are all the, the styles and the rails for the doors. And the door is going to have a window glued into place. But first I'm making the outer frames. And I'm using the previously cut piece, actually the very first one, so I don't have a run out from each various piece. So I keep using the same piece as my measuring stick. And now I have everything I need. I have eight styles and eight rails. And now I'm sanding a bevel there because that's where the weld bead is going to live inside of that bevel. And everything's just slightly longer than it needs to be on the outside going up and down. I guess those would be the rails. And the styles are cut just slightly shorter so that I have a little room for the weld. And that piece of wood inside is just to maintain an exact size between every one of the pieces. Anything that hangs over is going to get grounded down. And to avoid a lot of flexing and shrinking and twisting, I'm just adding about a half a centimeter of weld to each joint, flipping it and doing the other side and then going back and forth. And now I'm using a 3M Cubetron cutting wheel, a flap disc. It really makes fast work of doing the grinding when you're using a Cubetron. And you can see the, uh, the debris flying off there is actually flakes looks like almost like steel wool. They're little curly cues just like you would get from a, a hand plane. It's pretty amazing how well that cube tron stuff works. And now I'm just using a palm sander to clean that up a little bit. This is going to be rustic looking so I'm just sort of cutting the the obvious swirl marks. And now here I'm using what's going to frame the glass on the back of the doors. This is quarter by quarter square rod cold rolled. And uh, I'm just using a little cutting guide there created by those two clamps, repetitive cuts. And I'm using the end of the table. Now this is the glass, and I get the glass at a local spot here in town. This is wired glass. It, I guess you might call it fired glass or fire glass. And I just like it because of the styling of the frosting and the wire. It just gives a nice utilitarian look or an industrial look. And these little frames are going to keep the glass in place because I plan on gluing them in. And this just gives it a finished edge inside when you open the cabinet door. And I also intentionally had the glass overlap quite a bit for two reasons. It just gives it a nice style when you open the door. And then also you have a big, large surface area for glue. And now the doors are going to determine the frame that's going to make up the face of this cabinet. And I'm building it from the doors to the face frame to the top to the sides, to the back, to the bottom, and in that sequence. And I had a loose sketch of what I wanted to do, but as I dug into it, the details I had to figure out right there on the spot. And you'll notice I have spacers everywhere to maintain the distance and the gaps everywhere. I wanted this to look nice and precise. I TIG weld my face frame in place there. I flip it over gently and then TIG the other side. And I'm taking so that I don't end up digging too deep into that face frame. I can just put a little glob of weld there and then grind it away. And then also from time to time I'll use the TIG when I want to do a delicate operation and I'll use the MIG when I want some deep penetration and I'm not so worried about splatter. And here I'm just trying to run a little delicate bead as a fillet joint. And I need a lot of practice with my welds, and every project I make, I get a little bit better. But I am not going to win any contests anytime soon, laying down dimes. I promise you that. So, thank God for the grinder.
And what we have here is uh, McMasticar has uh, supplied these bullet hinges and you weld them into place. And here I am tacking them into place. I tacked everything lightly just to make sure everything was staying in alignment. And you'll notice little chocks of wood holding the doors up at a certain height compared to the back of the face frame. I wanted everything raised up a little bit or forward ultimately. And now this is what's going to become the top of the cabinet, but I'm using the face frame to give me a guide to make sure everything stays nice and square and even in the same shape. And I'm using the Lincoln Fume Extractor to collect my grinding sparks. And now here I am. I'm upside down now. Now this is the top of my cabinet getting glued, so we're starting to go into three dimensions. And again, since I trust that square, I'm laying down what's going to become the frames for the sides of the cabinet, the left and right sides. I'm just laying it down on top of the already existing frame, using it as a reference for square. And now here I'm tack welding my sides in. And that's going to basically make up the side frame, welding up underneath what will be the top. Tack welding a series of tacks internally, and then all the outside seams get filled. And uh, you'll see I have the toe kick on the front, and I return the toe kick back around just under the side frame. I didn't show me welding it, but you could see it there. And now I'm standing up, and uh, where all my fill welds are to create the face frame and the side frame and everything, I'm just grinding it till it's smooth. I'm trying to maintain a nice clean look. But I'm not going to get overly critical. If some of the weld joint shows, I kind of like that. Now here I am building up the bottom. And this is going to basically become a, a carriage to hold the bottom piece of wood, which is going to make up the bottom of the cabinet. And now I'm starting to make the panels that will become the sides inside of the side frames. And they just tack weld it in. I hold them in place with the vice grips. And then I just put a series of even tacks. And I jump around to make sure that nothing starts to curl or bend. And tack welding is nice because you don't overheat the sheet and get it to buckle. If I tried to run a bead on there, I would get a buckle in the, the panel would lift away from the frame. It would be hard to get it to stay in place. And now here I am cutting what amounted to 12 gauge steel with a shear that shouldn't be cutting 12 gauge steel. And there <laughs> you see my frustration. I was able to get through it, but it was not easy. I think I put that shear to the test. And now these are going to be the two panels that make up the top and I'm welding them from inside, leaning over into the open back. Again, a series of tack welds is better in this case than trying to run a bead, because you'll get a buckle in that sheet metal. And then once you buckle it, you're over. You've got to break it out and do it again. So now I'm just in inspecting my work and making sure the cabinet doors stay in alignment, which is very difficult. I had to kind of adjust them a few times. And now here you see I put a little stopper in there off camera, and now I'm welding magnets gluing magnets with CA glue. And I actually ended up adding a second set of magnets to each door, which gave it a considerable tack. It was really nice. So here I am. And now I am welding in some tabs that will become what the back screws into. I used three quarter inch Baltic birch for the bottom and the back. And that was primarily so that when I decide what I'm going to use this cabinet for, I can screw shelves directly to the backboard. So I'll make some steel brackets that are going to carry the shelves, just like you might see on, a, on, a, on your typical wall. Now I'm drilling the holes in the bottom frame. These holes are going to screw through the frame into the bottom piece. And now here's my Baltic birch sheet, and that is the width for the back, and this is the width for the bottom. Cross-cutting them to the right length. One is just slightly wider than the other, so I didn't cut them together. And now I ended up with this funny frame, and I needed to niche the bottom into the frame. It wasn't planned, but it worked out perfectly, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I just painted the inside of the cabinet black. It's easy to do it before I put it together, of course, and a little bit neater. And once I sanded that, once that paint dried, I sanded it, and it gave it a nice slick feeling. And now here I am just cleaning up some of the joints, and like I said, I'm not overly critical about how clean these joints look. I, I actually don't mind. As long as the overall thing looks nice and square and sharp, which I think it does, 
Now I'm degreasing it. I spent a, about a half hour washing it off, and now I'm using birchwood blackener. This is going to blacken the metal, and it's sort of a slow process. So I just keep flooding it on and flooding it on, and slowly the metal starts to turn black. And then at one point I grabbed a Scotch-Brite pad and I started scrubbing in the chemical into the steel, and that started to work a little bit better because it was cutting through any of the grease I may have missed. And so I'm using that Scotch-Brite pad to apply. And then to stop the chemical reaction, you got to spray it with distilled water, and that's what's inside of that jug. And now you spend a little time wiping it off, and it will begin to rust. And you can clean that rust off completely. In my case, I like to leave it in the nooks and crannies. It looks a little bit more industrial, which is the style we're going for here. So there's the bottom going in place, and the screws hold everything in place. That worked perfectly. And now the back, and you'll see what I mean. That niche goes into that frame. And then once I screw it against the stoppers, everything is nice and secure. And the back meets the bottom nice and cleanly, as you can see there. And now it's time to give it a final coat of Permalac, Permalac Lacquer Sealer. This creates a barrier coat to keep your cabinet or your steel from rusting. And I gave it a few coats here, and I probably would give it a light sanding and then give it another coat. And I'm using E6000 glue, which is a uh, very strong glue. It's a silicone that has some sort of etching qualities to it. It's stronger than silicone, but it feels like silicone. And I'm using my clamps, and I'm putting just enough glue in that when I squeeze with those clamps, the glue floods the available space and almost disappears. Of course, it's there, but you don't see a visible edge line because it just fills in whatever that available space is. You squeeze it until it goes right up to the inside edge of the metal and to the outside edge of the inside of the frame. And this cabinet came out actually a lot better than I thought. Those bullet hinges were difficult to weld on and I kind of lost a little bit of steam when I didn't do a clean job with the hinges, but I was able to clean them up a little bit with the grinder and ultimately I like the rust and the glass combination. And I'm very proud of this one. I decided to leave hardware off just because I wasn't quite sure what the design would be just yet. Thanks for watching.